So I'm just about done going down this first wall. All I'm doing is sealing up around the two befores that block basically birds and stuff from flying in. There's a gap there, probably, I don't know, half inch or so, all the way around, well, all the way across the top of the two before that's set in here. And all I'm doing is sealing those up. Now, this will be vented, right? But it'll be controlled by a thermostat, I believe. At least as that's what I'm thinking. I've got an electric fan that I'm going to put on a thermostat to and a vent on the other end and have it pull air through the attic in the summer because this has to be vented, but I don't want it as vented as it is right now. So let's quickly go over why I chose this over some of your more commonly used materials like drywall, plywood. I mean, for shops I've seen literally everything used as a ceiling material, right? We just want a barrier in between our workspace and our attic, something to hold the heat in. Now the reason I chose this is price and what you get for your money. For this stuff, I get a barrier and I get an R value of 10 in a two inch thick piece of material, which is pretty good in one go, right? I put this stuff up. It's a barrier and it's an insulator all in one. Now with plywood, which is what I would have preferred to use on this ceiling, I would have pretty much just got that barrier. And with the current prices of plywood, it just wasn't, uh, wasn't realistic to plywood this whole roof. And then go on top of that and put you know, an expensive insulation. But if money wasn't an option, that's what we would have done. Plywood with a R30 rock wool or some exotic spray foam. I chose this because it met both of those needs, right? It did, doesn't exceed in any one of those categories, the barrier or you know, the insulator, but it meets them both and hopefully will serve the needs for me in this workshop. Now, plow, or drywall would have been definitely the cheapest way to go, but there is absolutely no way that I'm gonna sand all those joints. Plus it's susceptible to water and moisture and tends to mold out here. That's been my experience with the drywall out here is that it just turns black and looks nasty in no time. So drywall, out of the question, not dealing with it heavy and just not good for a workshop that's not temperature controlled, right? So this stuff is why, I, that's why I chose this stuff because water won't hurt it. It's a good insulator, it serves a purpose, right? That's why. <laughs> Who's that?
So mounting this foam board to the ceiling is real easy. First thing I'm doing is just putting it up on the bottoms of the trusses. It's getting held in place with 12 3 inch screws. I mean two alone will hold the weight of one of these sheets of foam. You can imagine they're pretty light. And then stripping all the cracks, which is what Elizabeth is helping me paint right now with 3 inch strips of 5 8 ply. And it's looking really good. I'm definitely happy with the way it's turning out. This will also give it a little more weight bearing capability in the future when I go to insulate it more. So here's the primer that I'm using and it's not really necessary for the paints that I'm going to be using to be primed first but this stuff's really thick it helps to hide all the imperfections and stuff not that that really matters to me but the edges of plywood are really rough and this stuff just is thick enough to fill those in and you know make it not look so Sometimes after you use these tape measures for a while, they get really sharp on the edges. And this one's got me pretty good. I've been cutting these straight three inch strips always at the same spot. So because I had a lot of leftover pieces of plywood laying around from the construction of the wall and from sheeting the roof, it just worked out nice that uh, you know I had plenty to do the ceiling in here uh, with ply that just would have otherwise went to waste. So. Is a good use for the stuff. Each strip also gets the edges beveled on the side that shows for about 45 degree uh, just to help hide any width variation along its length because these are just hand cut with the skill saw and it turned out really nice. So I haven't filmed every stage of this project simply because it's such a large and repetitive job putting up a ceiling that, and I want to get done with it to be honest. Um, you can see me and my son put up a few strips of the wood without painting it so well because we didn't have the paint immediately so there'll be a little painting that has to be done overhead off a ladder but you know, it's minimal. My wife you know, volunteered to prime and paint all the rest of the strips which was really nice of her. I also got a few light fixtures hung. Now I'm running all new wire, all new boxes, everything new for the lights. And it is quite the job to get everything cleaned out above the rafters that I've stored over the years. You know, and get everything nice and ready for a new ceiling. It's exciting to see it come in or all come together. You ready to see if those work? Yeah. They should. So the press is cleaned up. My son and I took some time and just wiped it off, right? It looks a lot better, although it needs, still needs painted. I'm not a big fan of red. Maybe green or, or gray or black. Who knows? Probably not black. Maybe blue, like a dark blue or something would look good. Now this thing does have problems now that I did not realize when I you know, brought it in here and we moved the ram and stuff on it. it there's a reason why it was uh, sitting outside. And that's because it does not build pressure. No more than five tons is what I can get with this thing. It's got some slippage, what I think is slippage, in the uh, valve body. One of the check valves or something in there is not sealing properly. This is my opinion. And uh, we're just not getting uh, the pressure buildup that we should. This is a 50-ton press. So in the future, we're going to have to tear this thing down, the valve body, and uh, you know, make sure that uh, all the parts are good to go. Maybe replace... Uh, what's damaged and uh, change the fluid. That's the idea anyway. I'm not worried about it because hydraulic presses are pretty pretty basic in their function. So, But it is something that we'll have to take care of. 
Now I want to talk for a second really quick about this concrete floor, right? And the range of prices that I got. I know a lot of people are interested in what stuff costs. And I want to talk about this floor and uh, the range of prices that I got for doing this same job, right? From many different contractors, probably at least nine, eight or nine anyway. Cheapest quote that I got for this floor, $4,200, which is a good price, right? But what do you get for that $4,200 and, uh, you know, who's doing it? And the most expensive quote that I got, which was shocking, was $9,200, right? For the same work. I read the work detail and they did no more than the crew that I hired to do this job at, uh, you know, a little more than half that price. But, right, you get the idea. This can vary in price greatly, and it's in your best interest, or concrete can vary in price greatly, and it's in your best interest to get as many quotes as you can because uh, you could end up overpaying by double uh, easy for any project, right? For any project. So do yourself a favor and get as many quotes as you can. So the ceiling's looking good. I'm excited about it. It's, uh, it's turned out actually better than what I thought it would and is going to work out perfect for me. You can, you can paint this stuff. It's not that it doesn't have to stay green, right? Uh, we could paint it white, paint it blue, whatever. You know, just some water-based paint. It'll stay on there just fine. So I'm excited. Although it's a ton of work. So for the record, let me say that I think that blow-in insulation is a really good thing. But it's only a really good thing if it's one and done, right? You blow it in there and you never ever intend to remove the ceiling or walls again. Because if you have to, trust me, it's a absolute nightmare. It was a bad idea to put blow-in insulation above this area of the shop. One, my roof leaked. Two, the shop wasn't sealed and animals would get up there. And it just didn't work out well, right? A couple times we had a you know, soaked mass of that wet blow-in insulation fall through, cover everything in the shop with a thin layer of that insulation. Just unhealthy, just nasty stuff that I'll never mess with again if I have a choice. So I'm slowly moving stuff in from the outside, shelving and stuff that I'd collected, moving stuff over from the old side to the new side, but by first, by first, but before I fill up this new side with stuff, I obviously want to get the ceiling done because it's obviously easier to work on the ceiling without a bunch of stuff under you. So we're just kind of working over slowly, cleaning stuff as I go, and nothing is in its permanent position. It's just for now, till I get this ceiling in. Oh, I keep the stand full of screws. And a ceiling is a ton of work, especially when, you know, all the stuff's packed on one side of the shop because this side of the shop at one point didn't exist, right? And we were had to pack all our stuff over there, and now 
you can't even get a ladder up there, right? So we're cleaning stuff as I move it over because I'm not bringing anything over here that's filthy. So here's a look at one of many of the LED fixtures that I have in the shop and what I'm going to use in here. They're actually made for drop ceiling, but I mean, pretty much rig these up any way you want. They're not very heavy, and they put off a great amount of light. This is a two foot by two foot. It's 40 watts, half amp. Uh, this is 120 volts. Really nice fixtures. Been pretty durable as well. I've had no problems other than the ones that have got you know, leaked on and damaged. But other than that, you know, highly recommended. Relatively cheap as well. And you can, this one's damaged as well. But, yeah. I'm not, I'm not replacing everything in the shop that's not perfect, that's for sure. Can't afford to do that. So in order to minimize waste, to avoid cutting these sheets of foam board that are going to go on the ceiling, what I'm doing is spanning the joints in between the trusses. That way all my sheets end up lining up, all the joints of them anyway, and that way when I strip everything it's all nice and even. And plus I've got a good wide board here, just a piece of waste 2x6 from building the wall you know, to screw everything to. It worked out, out really well. And it's a whole lot easier than trying to make sure that your sheets end up ending on the on one of these 2 before trusses, right? Which is nearly impossible when they're not exactly spaced even. So I picked up a set of attic stairs. Um, not that expensive, really. About $120, I think, somewhere right around in there. Uh, relatively affordable. And I'm interested to see how easy they are to install, or how hard they are, actually. Never installed a set of these before. These are for a ceiling that is 7 foot 8 inches to 10 foot 3 inches, right? It's it's adjustable. And this, from the concrete, is 10 foot 3 to the bottom of the truss. So they should work, right? So let's open this up, have a look at what's inside, and uh, debate installing it. So this particular ladder is made by Century. It is weather stripped, has gas cylinder hinges on it, which is nice. also has an insulated door, and I like the aluminum ladder over the wood. So, you know, hopefully this thing installs pretty easy. Hmm. So there is our adjustable ladder feet, the hardware like lag screws, the pull cord, and some other screws for something. Caution, do not remove this strap until instructed. Um, insulation instructions inside this book. Hmm. Well, they expect you to get that all out of there without tearing it all to pieces. That, I guess. Opening or standing on the folding attic ladder climbing sections prior to properly fastening to the ceiling joist could cause serious bodily injury. Yes, I'm sure that could. Do not attempt to open the door prior to installation. I mean, that's all no brain stuff. What's going on here? Get to the meat. Job. 
So the installation is pretty straightforward on this. Now it's not done, not even close. It's just to the point where they want you to open it and start putting in the permanent fasteners. But all I did was set it up on the two boards. I've already got this one down, just temporary support boards. I put a couple screws up. I had to vary from the installation or instructions a little, although the instructions are written in English. They're kind of hard to follow, but this is from Mexico. Seems like a decent unit, but still. So I've just got a few screws just temporarily driven in. I've got a header board up at the front of this unit that will support all the way to the ladder. And now it's time to open it and uh, start uh, installing it permanently, right? Got to put some shims and stuff in it. I'm not crazy about the screws that they send with the unit, although they'd be fine. Uh, I'm going to use these large GRKs, which are real good stuff. So hopefully you can see what's going on here. They come with pre-drilled holes where they want you to bolt this thing. All we've done is space this unit evenly on each side. We've got our shims driven down right where the bolt's going to go through. And we're going to run it right in right there just to keep this thing spaced, right? And not stress the frame. That way it opens and closes like it should. That's it. We'll cut those off. How exactly how well you can see this but there's one two three four five six mounting holes up here and we've just got the frame of the actual ladder here and then behind this we put a header beam to connect this to right so this takes all the weight along with your trusses we got to put shims in the side uh, of this as well Move something. Ladder installed. There we go. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a 350 pound rating, which is pretty good. I actually dreaded installing this. I don't know why. It was pretty basic.
So check out these really neat cast iron rake wheels or mower wheels. I believe they're from the probably the 1930s, 1940s. That's a guess. Solid cast iron, probably at least uh, three feet, you know, across. Probably a 1.5 foot radius. Neat wheels for uh, sure. And I picked them up from a gentleman who was driving by and stopped and said, you wouldn't know anybody who would be interested in some wagon wheels, would you? And I initially said no until I looked in the back of his truck and seen these. They're not wagon wheels. They're from a you know, old piece of equipment, a farm piece of equipment. Heavy cast iron, probably 80 pounds a piece, I'm guessing. Neat. I'm glad to save them from the, from the scrapyard, that's for sure. So be a nice decoration in front of the shop or in front of the house. Or potentially make a cart out of them, like my buddy Matthew Look from the YouTube channel Look Creations suggested. So really neat. And I'm excited to have them. So things are looking really good in here. I am officially over halfway done. Now it's going a slow because I have to clean everything and move everything you know, as I work, which takes a lot of time. I don't want to end up when I'm finished with a bunch of mess everywhere. So I'm trying to take care of everything as I move forward. That way it's easy when I'm done. Anyway, I'll get you off the tripod. I'll walk you around. I'll show you where I'm at so far, what my plans are uh, moving forward, right, to finish this off because you know, I've talked about, uh, you know, of a grinding room and stuff in the, in the past, and I want to discuss that as well. Now, I'm moving as fast as I can on this, still staying within the uh, NJDA, which guidelines, right, for accuracy when it comes to roofs or building or really anything, to be honest. It's, it's an international sta standard set by Jimmy Duresta, and it clearly states if it looks square, it is square. And that's all I'm trying to do, right? It looks, it looks good, and I'm happy with it. So let me get you off the tripod, walk you around, and, and show you what I've got so far and what we're going to be doing in the future, at least as of now. So a lot of my viewers will remember that this 25% of the shop here was walled off from the rest. Originally, there was a wall that ran right down the center of the shop that I had to tear out in order to get the concrete work done. And initially, I was going to rebuild that wall back and turn this area into a grinding room. But I've given that quite a bit of thought, and I kind of like the way it feels in here, just open. And if I want to separate my grinding equipment, I think what I'm going to do is put a track and a plastic curtain in here that will allow me to separate those dust-making equipment from, 
you know, the big chip making equipment. So this wall is going to come out, not to mention all the drywall on it's damaged by water. <laughs> it no longer fits in here because it was built after this building had collapsed a bit. The seal no longer meets up at the truss, which could be fixed, but you know, I just don't want to go through the effort. Plus, I don't like the idea of having to move my equipment in and out through a door when I could just leave it open right, and solve my problems much easier. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Tear out this wall, no longer separate the shop at all, and leave it open, which feels better in my opinion. So there's a decent look at what I've got done so far, about 50% of it as far as the sheeting up anyway. Still got 75% of my lights to go up. Still need to make an insert to go in the recess there for my attic stairs and then trim around that and then trim you know, all the way around the perimeter. Now, I've not decided on whether I'm gonna leave this roof or ceiling green or if I'm gonna paint it white. Uh, it all depends on how the lighting is in here once I get it all up. And if it doesn't need it, you know, I'm not gonna mess with it, right? Just for appearance wise anyway. But uh, if it does, it'll be easy enough to roll out those strips you know, there's only three or four screws in each one, and you could roll this ceiling out and paint it in a day if you if you wanted to. So we'll see. If it needs it, we'll do it, but otherwise I'm not going to mess with it. So I'm excited to get this far, and I think probably in the next week or so I'll be done, depending on the, how much time I have to work on it out here. And this should make it a ton easier to keep some heat out here. I'll probably end up using a wood stove. That's the thought at the moment, simply because there's such a vast amount of downed wood around here that it, you know, it's just the economical way to go. And a nice wood stove is, it's just pleasant, right? I love a wood stove. So we'll see. I still have to get a wood stove or something else, right? I'm not 100% set on anything, but I'm thinking wood stove for the shop. What do you think? You like it or do you not like it? Tell me in the comments. So this is the part of the project that I looked forward to from the moment that I started on it. The part where you're deciding where your equipment's gonna be, the shop layout, I mean, that is what I think most of us would enjoy. And it's exciting to see this thing coming together. And soon I'll be working in here instead of just on the shop all the time. And I definitely look forward to it. And I wanna say a massive thanks to anybody who has helped me get to this stage, helped me in any way, just by viewing the videos helps. So thank you, I appreciate it. And I guess that's it for this week. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. And I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own, waiting for the sun to blow.